Hi, welcome to our Centro Church online service. We're so glad that you could join us today, whether it's the first time you've watched or whether you're re-watching because you enjoyed the message. Hey, if this is your first time joining us today, there's a little QR code that's coming up on your screen right now. If you could scan that one, there's a new to Centro section or link that you can click and you can fill out your information and one of our team will get in touch with you. There's also a number of other links that you can click to explore as well. We know that you'll be so blessed by our message today and you'll see us again at the end of the service. So why don't we check out today's message? Give the regular tithe when you give out of a cheerful heart. I remember the day when I brought my wife's engagement ring. I loved her and that's why I asked her to marry me. Would it not be a little awkward if I went to the jeweler and I said, oh, can I buy a stupid ring? Oh, okay, what for? Oh, this woman, oh, i got to marry her. And I, got, I have to buy the ring. It's just a thing. Oh, okay, how much? Oh, that much? What? Oh, my goodness, this is ridiculous. Here, have my money. Get the ring, you know, go uh, into the middle of the Sunday Islands on a yacht, right? Because that's where I did it, okay? That's the standard, gentlemen, okay? <laughs> that's, that's the standard, okay, on a yacht, in the middle of, the, of, of, of uh, uh, Airly Beach, out in the reef snorkeling. And then I asked my wife to marry me halfway through while she was eating her sandwich. And uh, <laughs> that was quite funny, and it's all on video. Anyway, could you imagine if I just got the box out and went, here. Oh, what's this? Oh, what does this mean? Oh, you know what it means. Just put it on, far out. Right? <laughs> Just, I, just hurry up. I want to eat my lunch too, right? She would have said no, right? <laughs> Could you imagine that? No. Who knows that at the jeweler? It was tingly, right? Couldn't, you know, like, oh, man, this, this is real. This is real, you know? <laughs> Far out, get in the box, you know? And you ask and you're stumbling over words, right? And it's like, man, oh, I can't wait to give this because I love this woman. Right? That's a cheerful heart. That's how we are to be with the tithe. It's not reluctance. I love doing it. This is awesome. I love God, right? Number three, we give because it's missional. We bring the tithe to increase the storehouse of God's house. Malachi 3.10. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse so that there'll be enough food in my temple. This is why we tithe, right? To increase your local storehouse, your local church. Four, we tithe and we receive a blessing, right? Bring all the tithes in the storehouse so there'll be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it and put me to the test. Now, Jesus says when he's, says when he's being tempted, thou shalt not test the Lord your God, right? We aren't to put God to the test. But God says here, actually, there's one thing that you can test me on, your money, because I know that you love it so much, right? You hold on to it. But test me that if you give, if, 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 if you give, you know, what's required, put me to that test and you will see a blessing come into your life. And so we tithe as well and we get a blessing out of it. Who doesn't want that? Man, I want the blessing. Come on. Number five, we tithe so that your pastors can eat. Don't you realize that those who work in the temple get their meals from the offerings brought to the temple? And those who serve at the altar get a share of the sacrificial offerings. In the same way, the Lord ordered that those who preach the good news should be supported by those who benefited from it. Right? This is Paul saying, right? Bring your tithe and your offering, right? Bring your monetary gifts into the church so that those who are studying the word, right, can be focused on studying the word and equipping the saints, which is you and me, for the work of the ministry, right? That they are focused on that and they don't have to worry about doing any other thing so that they can eat, okay? So that their families can survive, okay? That was one of the reasons why God initiated the tithe in the first place. He said, Levites, don't worry about anything. The tithe will look after you, you know, right? So that's why we tithe. So that as a church, we can have a 
pastoral staff who are studying the word, who are every week bringing uh, something to our church, to our people, something that they have uh, studied, that they have labored in, and that on a Sunday or a Friday night or Sunday, or you know, kids' church, whatever it is, that they can uh, birth something of God to you because they've been in labor in God's word. Right? And so that's also what the tithe does. It allows us as a church, and I'm so grateful, and, and, and even if I wasn't the pastor, if I was, you know, I used to not be a pastor, and I was grateful that I had a pastor who could just spend time in the Word and bring me what God had to say each week. Who loves that, right? So, oh, that one got an applause. Fantastic. <laughs> Worship, yeah, okay. Love, yeah, okay. Mission, yeah, okay. Pastors have to eat, yes! Woohoo! Amen. <laughs> and that was just from the front row. And uh, <laughs> number six, let's finish on this. We tithe because we are disciples. As a disciple of Jesus, there are certain things that we don't neglect. Now, I just want to share a confession this morning. And uh, don't think less of me. And if you're a board member in the place, I, I, I like my job. Don't fire me, please. But I do have a confession. I used to be a chronic leave the towel on the floor guy. Anyone else here? Confession time? <laughs> One, just me and you. Fantastic. Okay. Everyone, every other man in here is a liar. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, after 12 years of constructive f- feedback from my wife. <laughs> you know, I love it. I love her feedback. It's fantastic, you know. 12 years of it. I've we'll been married for longer. How long have we been married for? I forget. I don't even know. Just put the ring on far out, you right? <laughs> 2008, what does that make it? Right? Throw the towel. She would hate it all the time. I'm like, who cares? Just pick it up and put it in the basket, right? And for so many years, put... Anyway, I've learned from my evil ways... And I'm now a good put the towel in the basket kind of guy. Who's that guy? Oh, there's more men's hands coming up now. (laughs) It's fantastic, right? Here's what I've learned. I've figured out that when I'm obedient, right, to the things of my darling wife, that I attract favour from her. That's what I've learned, right? When I live by the certain rules or uh, desires, right, of her heart, I find favour, right? Be good to the girl and she'll be good back to me. That's a good thing for all the men in the house, okay? Right? Be good to the girl. Be good to the girl, be good to the girl, and she'll be good back to you, right? That's a good little thing for marriage right there, right? For you bless the righteous, O Lord, you cover them with favour as with a shield. Right? I found that when I was good, there was favor. And the same thing is with us and the tenants of Jesus, that when we are good, there is favor. Here's the point. Love is obedience, and obedience attracts favor. Yeah. Right? Love is obedience. Discipleship is obedience. And it attracts favor. We tithe because we are disciples of Jesus. Jesus fulfilled the law. Right? He fulfilled the Old Testament law. And now we have Jesus. And Jesus did three things with the laws of the Old Testament. Firstly, he cancelled some of them. Secondly, he made some laws harder. And thirdly, he kept some as is, right? They were the three things right here that Jesus did with the Old Testament. He cancelled some of it, he made some of it harder, and he kept the rest just do as normal. For instance, uh, some things that he stopped, he stopped the Sabbath, right? The Sabbath was the one day of rest. And he said, you drop kicks, you've made this a law. It was supposed to be a day of rest, but you've made it so stressful, right? So we're just going to remove that now. We're going to ditch the Sabbath, right? That's not going to be a law anymore. And so he stopped that, right, because that was being abused. Something that he made some things harder, right? The Bible in the Old Testament said, um, don't commit adultery. Um, the Bible said, don't kill people. Stop doing that, right? And Jesus said, actually, if, let's make that harder. If you even think of someone in a lustful way in your heart, that's adultery. If you even hate someone in your heart and mind, you've just murdered them, right? So Jesus made, he he got rid of some laws and he made some laws harder. The rest of them, he just pretty much keep as is. In Matthew, Jesus says this. He's talking to the Pharisees of the day 
And he says, what sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the most important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes. Oh, Jesus never said to tithe. Yes, he did right here, right? You should tithe, yes, right? That's part of discipleship, but do not neglect the more important things, right? So yes, we should tithe, but we should also be people of mercy and justice and faith, right? That's who we should be, right? And we should be 100% people of mercy, justice, and faith, but also tithe, right? That's what Jesus said about the tithe, that he was correcting their attitude toward weightier matters, which is looking after widows, looking after uh, uh, people who are in poverty. But he certainly said, right, keep doing that which you were doing. Paul and both Jesus make it clear that the same practice of financing the temple with the tithe, which was not optional for the Jews, is the same practice and uh, 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 that supports and expands the ministry of the church, which I believe is not optional for being a disciple. A disciple of Jesus is tough. It's hard to be a disciple of Jesus. Luke 14 says, uh, uh, Jesus says, you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything that you own. And they didn't say that when I prayed for Jesus to come into my heart. <laughs> right? But that's what being a disciple is. It's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Tim's gone. All the security that Tim thinks he needs, that's not even in my peripheral anymore. I just follow Jesus, and I'm hoping by faith he looks after me. Right? That's what living for Jesus is about. Expansion hurts. Expanding your household budget to tithe might hurt. I remember when we uh, had our children. And uh, I, I just kind of watched, really. But, you know, certainly there was an expansion, right? And the stretch hurts. There's pain in the stretch. And for some of you here today, it, there might be some stretching pains, right? Who here goes to the gym? No, me neither, right? And uh, <laughs> I know you were thinking, really, Tim, you look fantastic. Thank you. And uh, right, when you go to the gym, you do it for a few days, your muscles get sore. It hurts. Why? Because you're stretching them. They're getting bigger, right? And there's a pain in expansion. And that's the same with you and I. You know, for some of us, this might be uh, a part of a pain of discipleship. It might stretch you. It might create a conversation for you with your spouse and in your household. Now, let me say this. In no way am I putting pressure on your life. Me. Jesus might be, right? Um, I'm not putting any pressure on any family budget and I'm not putting pressure on any relationships. Okay, that's not my intention. Like what I said said at the start, I want you to hear my heart for you as as a disciple of Jesus and I want you to hear my heart for God's kingdom, for God's house, for His church, right? That's why we're preaching from this perspective this morning. I'm wanting to put the point to you of what Jesus has to say about this part of your discipleship journey. When we tithe, the kingdom expands. When we tithe, the church expands. Now, over the next six to seven months, leading up to February next year, we're going to slowly unpack a few things that we believe, our executive team and our board, believe that God is directing us on an adventure, right? And it costs to go on adventures. The tithe allows the local church to go on that adventure, to expand. And we believe that God has given us a key to expand our church so that God's kingdom can expand in our city. And so we're going to be releasing some of these things over the next few months at certain periods in time of what we believe God is calling us to. And so like what I said, hear my heart for the house. There is so, so many more people who don't know Jesus in our city. And they are dying from sin. They are shamed because of their lifestyle. They are guilty because of their actions. 
And there are people who are lonely. There are people who are disconnected from family. There are people who are unreconciled ultimately to eternity. And I want to see those people found in Jesus' name. That means that us, we have to take responsibility as disciples to reach out. Why don't we stand this morning? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for our church and leave you with a blessing. After that, I'm going to our Collingwood Park location to speak this same sermon. So I'm sorry that I can't stick around and uh, be with you afterwards, but I'm going to be with uh, our, our other church family there. Can you just hold your hand out like you're going to receive something from God? I want to pray a blessing over you and I want you to receive something of God this morning. Lord, I want to pray a blessing today over our church. Lord, over our people, over our families. Lord, over every business represented here. Lord, I want to speak a blessing, a favorable prayer. Lord, that you would be Jehovah Jireh, the great God and Lord who sees and provides. Lord, you firstly see our need as individuals and as a family unit. And this morning, I pray favor over every single household. Lord, I want to pray a blessing, Lord, of finance, of financial favor. Lord, I want to pray, Lord, over everyone who is on a wage. Lord, for uh, healthy wages for the industries that they work in. Lord, I want to pray for pay increases. Lord, I want to pray, Lord, for those who hold investments, that their investments would go well. Lord, I want to pray for those people who own businesses or who are directors in companies. I want to pray, Lord, that as they work that business, as they work in that company, Lord, that you would uh, use their wisdom to make things healthy for that business. Lord, that that business would prosper. Lord, and out of that prosperity, that they would also receive a favor. Lord, you see the need that we have for our church. Lord, the need to expand, the need to get into new spaces and into new places. And so I'm praying right now, Holy Spirit, that you would also do a work in our church, that as your church prospers, let your house prosper. Lord, let this church uh, expand in its resource. Lord, let this church expand in its people. I'm praying that this church would be a uh, church of salvation, that we would see people one for Jesus, first time, the second time, the third time, as Lord, the down and the out. Let this place be a place of hope. Let this place be a place of reconciliation. Lord, we are here. Use us. Don't pass us by Jesus. And so I'm praying, Lord, that you would uh, just like a flood, flood our city with healing. Lord, heal our broken heart. We stand in the gap this morning of our city. Lord, and we confess, Lord, the sins that our city has. Lord, the sins of domestic violence. Lord, the sins of drug and alcohol abuse. Lord, the sins of juvenile crime. Lord, we confess these things. Lord, and we ask that, Lord, that you would forgive us. And that you would forgive us as a church, Lord, for anything that we have done. Lord, that has blocked the flow of your favor. Lord, we confess our sin today. Lord, and we say, would you move? Would you move in your kingdom? Would you move in our households? Would you move in our city, Lord? Would you do a fresh work in this place? Would you do a fresh work through you uh, and, and, and me? Would you do a fresh work through me and us together? And so, Lord, I just pray a prayer of blessing over every single person. Lord, those who are watching online today who are part of our family, Lord, we pray a prayer of blessing over them, Lord, as, as well, that everything spoken, Lord, that they would receive in Jesus' name. Lord, those who aren't here, who are a part of our church, we speak that over them as well. Lord, we know that from a distance you heal. And so I pray, Lord, for every single person who isn't here today because they're sick, we speak healing in Jesus' name to their bodies. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We worship you. We love you. Lord, we are for this mission. God, we are disciples. So I pray, Holy Spirit, that over this next few hours as this word is regurgitated and chewed on like cut I pray Holy Spirit that you would do a fresh work that you would make a way where right now there might not seem a way in some family budgets but I'm praying Lord that you would make a way that you would show us Lord that we would not just put you to the test in this but that we would 
receive that favor and that blessing. Lord, so that we can, so that as we're a blessing, Lord, you bless us and we can be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, we're going to worship right now. Just spend time just telling all God how awesome he is and we love him. We hope and pray that you'll join us at one of our live services next week, either at 5 Pring Street, Ipswich at 9 a.m. or 5 p.m., or at our Collingwood Park location at Woodlink State School at 10 a.m. Blessings from our senior pastors, Pastor Tim and Pastor Catherine Spark, and all of the team here at